Hey young guys, tonight I'm going to show off my Shin Megami Tensei collection. But before I do, I'm going to give a big shout out to Aro Denamish. Apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly. Um, he has a fantastic RPG collection. You have to see it to believe it. I'll provide a link just down below. Click it. He's got a ton of great videos. Um, enjoy. Alrighty, um... Now, I've only recently just become a follower of Shin Megami Tensei. Um, this is due to me playing and completing Persona 4, which is easily the f my third favourite game on the PlayStation 2. It is an amazing game, but I'll get more into that near the end of the video. The first game that I'm going to show you is the first Shin Megami Tensei game on the Super Famicom. This is a little marvelous game that I reckon brought um, was fan it was great for its time. May 1992 was the first game made by Atlas, um, and it has become its flagship series. Um, it's a nice little first-person RPG that's set in Tokyo, and that's ultimately what draw what draws me to the series is it doesn't take place in some medieval fantasy world or uh, sci-fi steampunk like adventure it takes place in Japan um, this takes place some time just beyond the new millennium and what happens is is Armageddon strikes and what happens is you're taken into limbo and then you come out of limbo and you walk the uh, post-apocalyptic Tokyo and it really is a fantastic story it's a dark story um, that there's many dark moments, depressing moments. There's only one moment that I found quite hilarious is where if you choose to, at the start of the game, you have two choices of who to side with. Um, one of them, you can side with the Americans. And when you go into their embassy, they completely speak English. They don't speak Japanese or kanji. So if you were a Japanese kid playing this in the day, um, it'd be absolute gobbledygook. But what's funny is this English was done by the Japanese um, developers and it comes off as quite caveman-like. I don't know if they were trying to insult them on purpose, but it is quite hilarious. You should check it out. Um, I would take caution though, near the end it does get really difficult. Like every step I took I did three consecutive back-to-back -back battles and one day every step I had to do three consecutive back-to-back -back battles and up to the ninth battle I got slaughtered because I didn't have any healing or anything and I just wasn't having any fun so I decided to put down the game um, I gotta mention the monster designs they are fantastic they're all based off myth from various cultures and religions and I think that's one of the um, more great aspects of the series and it shows very well in the first game. Alrighty, the next game I've got is Shin Megami Tensei 2. Now I haven't played this yet, um, but hopefully I will get some time to do it soon. The general consensus is, the, from the videos and reviews I've read, is this is superior to the first game in many different ways. So I'll have to play it soon when I get a Japanese Super Famicom. Alrighty, the next game, and this is considered quite a rarity, and that is Kuyaku Megami Tensei. This is a remake of the first two Megami Tensei games that were on the NES or Famicom, and these are pretty much remade using uh, Super Nintendo um, powered graphics and music. And I gotta say, the music is bloody awesome. Um, the first dungeon theme of uh, I've seen videos online and the first dungeon theme that I heard, the theme of Daedalus, oh, I could listen to that for hours, it's so good. If you find music for any of the Megami Tensei games, listen to it, it's absolutely awesome. Alrighty, the next game is Shin Megami Tensei Lucifer's Call, I've always known as Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. Now, I remember seeing this game back in the day and I always would pass it by because I look at that little bit down the below, below that said includes Dante from Devil May Cry and I kind of thought that was a bit shameless um, for a game to advertise something so little 
um, to try and get more people to play it. Um, that actually was a deciding factor of me not to get it. It's kind of weird back then, but if I can go back in time, I would certainly convince myself to get it because it's a fantastic game. I've only played about eight hours of it, but I've enjoyed every minute playing this game. The only problem is, is my disc is buggered and will not load, so either I've got to fix it or I have to replace it. The next game is Digital Devil Saga 2, and yes, I forgot to take off the sticker. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to play this game until I've played the first game, but a lot of people in the RPG community regards this as one of the best console RPGs ever existed, so I'm interested to really give this a go. Next game is considered a oddball, and that is Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Raido Kuzanoa vs. the Soulless Army. Try saying that ten times fast. Um, I really like it. I've played it for about five hours. Um, I really I love my action RPG, so this really shined with me uh, big time. Um, I did stop playing it when I was burned out playing all these Shin Megami Tensei games back to back for six months straight. Um, what I played with it was really enjoyable. A lot of people bagged this for its controls. Um, I didn't see any problems with it. Uh, I really love the contemporary 1920s um, style and it's quite beautiful and I like the fact that they count this as the precursor to the, um, the entire series. And apparently there was a art book that came with this game and it tells you the universes and multiverses that um, comes out of one of the free endings of this game so it kind of sparks um, where all these games started and it's quite interesting to know. I probably will do a video on that later on next year. Alrighty, that's all the Shin Megami Tensei straight series games. The next one is my Persona collection and the first one is Persona for the PSP. Now, I absolutely love Atlas and their special editions. This comes with the two-disc soundtrack, and the music is absolutely awesome. Um, the battle theme is so addictive. Uh, I could spend hours just listening to it. Um, the game's alright. I played it for about 10 hours, and I like it more than most people. They don't like it because of the heavy elements borrowed from the older Shin Megami Tensei games like the first person dungeon crawling and the demon negotiator but that didn't bother me at all um, it's a very interesting story I'm look, I'll look forward to completing it down the track alrighty the next game I should say games uh, Persona 3 and Persona 3 FES um, I absolutely love Persona 3 I actually played it after I beat Persona 4 and I don't like it as much as Persona 4, but it's still one of the best RPGs on the PS2. There's so much you can do in the game. It's one of those games where if you don't buy anything for six months, except for one game, you, Persona 3 is that game. You can buy it, and this could take you up to half a year, depending on how you play your game, and it would keep you interested for well and truly six months. Um, I really like the characters. And I really love uh, Tartarus House design house this one big tower, crazy looking tower. And I absolutely love the social link system. That's my favorite part of the Persona games, um, Persona 3 and Persona 4, is just how you become more attached to the characters. And through the links, they power your personas. So it is essential, but I always found it to be the fun part of Persona games. Now what's interesting is, I've had my copy signed by one of the voice actors, or I should say voice actress, and that was Tara Platt, who voiced Mitsuru. Uh, she came to Supernova in April, which is a convention two hours away from me, and I went up to her and got this copy signed. And she was very, very happy because everyone around her were getting her to sign Naruto stuff because she does the voice of Tamari. And she got a kick out of the fact that I was the only one with something different for her to sign. 
and um, I took the time to say she did an excellent job with the voice and she was very flattered um, she's a very nice lady um, if you she comes to a convention you go up to her and talk to her she's lovely and the last game and it is certainly the best by far and that is Persona 4 um, this is the first game that I took a chance on and I'm glad I did because it is one of the best RPGs on the PS2 by far. I really love the characters and I really like the main character. He's probably got one of the best designs ever and he was one of the first characters I gave a Japanese name and it fit really well into the rhyme scheme of the of Persona 4 and the other Shin Megami Tensei games. I love the battle system. Um, I just love you know how everyone connects and everything and I especially like the all-out attack that always gets a kick out of me um, I just love the rural setting um, I love the characters and I love the social links and it's probably got one of the best villains ever in an RPG I really really love them and I really like the fact that this has multiple endings and they're not that easy to actually um, achieve without a walkthrough um, unless you're one of those guys who don't use walkthrough and you just keep playing for hours until you get something new but it's definitely one of those games you can lose yourself for months at an end playing definitely pick it up I've seen this for insanely cheap going on 30 40 dollars Australian and I think that's insane value for how good this game is alrighty that's my Shin Megami Tensei collection now I'm going to do something different with my videos from now on. I will be doing collection videos on and off, but I'm going to start to record more videos so I can get used to being on YouTube. As you can see, I hum and ha a lot, and I kind of want to get over that. So I'm going to record more videos and get confident with um, uh, recording myself um, and distributing myself on the net. Um, I've decided I'm going to do these little videos called um, my gaming rants whenever I want to talk about something that's come up in the news or something about a game I'm playing whether it be something good or something bad um, I just want to keep in touch with everyone and I do enjoy uh, recording these videos so um, I am starting to get in the swing of things hopefully next year where hopefully by the end of this year I will have the necessary equipment and do better videos that I've got many planned in the future um, the number one video that I'm going to be doing that I've pretty much come onto YouTube to do is going to be distributed around uploaded in December 16th which is the 15th anniversary of my all-time favorite game series and you will know what that is come December anyway guys Thank you for watching and catch you next time.